Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just what up, Phantom Loke? West West, what's cracking? Nothing much, oh boy. How you been since we last talked, man? I've been doing good, man. I've been doing good in yourself. Cool, cool. Can't complain. How's Swift and Avenue Trade doing over there? They doing good. They doing good. Cool, cool. They're Tell myself what up. Tell myself what up. Yeah, I'll tell them. Well, yeah, man, before we get started, uh, remind everybody what set you're from. You know what I'm saying? It's your low Phantom Loke. On 30 Avenue Crip. You know what I'm saying? West Side Crip shit. Light. Capital City chapter. You know what I'm saying? DMV chapter. You know what I'm saying? Were you born in the DMV area? Yeah, I was born in uh, Shady Grove Hospital, you know. Um, grew up, like, around, you know what I'm saying? Grew up around uh, Davisburg, Westview Park section. You know, that's the same neighborhood, just so you know, where uh, dude uh, Logic is from, okay. by the way. I don't know if you heard of Logic, but of that's course. where he's from. Great but, but I moved, but you know what I'm saying? But after that, I moved around a couple places, you know. I moved, I, I've been moving around, but basically... uh. Montgomery County area. Cool. So, yeah, I grew up here. I grew up here basically all my life. Okay. And give everybody an idea of what your upbringing was like. You know, was your mom around, pops around? Yeah, they was both around. You know what I'm saying? Good parents. You know what I'm saying? I love them dearly. You know, they done so much. You know what I'm saying? They they done, they, they go far beyond than any parent that I felt like. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's good parents out there. You know what I'm saying? But them two... They went up and beyond than anybody I ever know in my entire life. You know, like I wouldn't be the man that I am today if it wasn't for them. You know, I made like you know, say my personal life choices, but just because like with my morals and like just the way I carry myself as a young man should, I wouldn't have done it without my moms and my dad. You know. Okay. okay. Do you have any? Did you have any older family members? that banged or anything like that before you jumped off the porch? Uh, crazy thing. Uh, I mean, not in my household, but like, see, I got family down in Houston, Texas, you know, and, um, my big cousin, you know what I'm saying? Big cousin, you know what I'm saying? His name, his, his, his I call him, you know, uh -huh. he, um, he five dudes Hoover, you know what I'm saying? He doing, he doing a uh, life behind the penitentiary, you know what I'm saying? They called him, um, you know what I'm saying? On some heavy shit, you know. Hit him with that Rico and all that shit, you know. I love my cousin. You know? I love all my family down there. Shout out to all my family in Houston, Texas, you know. Yeah, um, I, I have family members, you know what I'm saying, down there, you know what I'm saying, doing their thing, moving or whatever they're doing. Before you joined the 30s, were you out in the street doing your thing? Yeah, actually I was. Um, see, I... Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story about that, too. Because, see, at the time, um, the Crips um, were really, 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 really rare to come across out here. Like, they were basically working as, like, under like an underground system. Like, you would have to know where to look to come across them, or you would have to go outside the DMV area and get put on and then bring it back over here. So at that time, you know, I was just basically like doing my own thing and I actually me and like two other friends, um, you know, we made this crew called FBC, you know, and it was like eight of us, you know, and it, if you looked at us at that time, you would think we was like a hybrid uh, co coalition or a gang or whatever. And just in case you didn't know what a hybrid is, like, uh, for example, like the soldier crew that they had in Alaska, like a mixture of Crips and blood and shit like that. Okay. That was the way, like, you know what I'm saying? It looked and all, but like, you had some of us that were actually like either Crip or blood at heart, you know, but like I said, the situation was in the DMV area, the DMV soil wasn't really fertile for that kind of subculture because DMV was very, very, very strict on their own specific culture. They already had their culture. Like, other states have their cultures, but DMV was, like, very strict. 
like I I remember you had an interview with um Carl Smiley mm-hmm. from the thirties. He um said in one of his own interviews he said that in one of his own interviews that it took a long time for the Christmas blood to hit the D C area. Mm-hmm. And because of like I said, D M V always had his own little culture, like dudes was repping their hood and crews and all that. And even though I was from a specific neighborhood and all that stuff, I never really ran with dudes from there. And the dudes I grew up um, over there with, they basically moved before I did. And I was like a really young kid at the time. I was the last one to move by force because they were about to tear down these apartments I was living in. So that's when we, I just kept on moving. But yeah, we made this crew and we was basically doing our thing. You know, uh, we was like a little tagging, uh, a tagging crew and like just a bunch of like what you call juvenile delinquents and shit. Okay. So we, yeah, we was doing our thing. I, I've been doing my thing, you know. Mm. And what was it about um, the '30s that caught your attention and it's like, okay, yeah, this is this is where I want my home to be. The locals on that set, um, they was very passionate about not just the set but Crip itself as much as I am. And, like, the way, like, for instance, Avenue Trey and Harlem Swift, the way they, how serious they take it, they take it just as serious as I do. Like, we're really passionate about Crip itself. Like, if it wasn't any set, you know what I'm saying? If it, if it went back to, like, how it was just Crip, we would still, you know what I'm saying, we would still be Crips because that's just what we are at heart. And that's why I've always been at heart because I first even knew about Crips and Blood. It like it was no get with shit with um me. Now I'm speaking back to me, like you know what I'm saying, my low same thing, but with me it wasn't no get with or like you know what I'm saying, like I'm an authentic crip, you know, like this shit was in my veins before I even noticed it. Like because like growing up I've always liked the color blue and my mom always used to tell me when I was a kid Blue meant good, red meant bad. Mm. Not to disrespect the blood and all that, but that, but like, from I've always identified things that way, but blue meant good and red meant meant bad. I mean, I do have my own personal stories about blood contacts and all that stuff, but that, like, from that day on, like, when I first knew about the Christian blood and, like, everything that was just around me, like, my influences and all that, I knew I was a crip. I just needed to know what set was mine. And it was the Harlem 30 Avenue, original Harlem Crip. That's my home. That's my Crip home. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little Now take me back to the day that you got put on, jumped in, you know, what was the whole, you know, energy, the vibe like that day? It was, it, it was really, uh, it was really actual. Like it was like, you know, it was basically like you've been called for this, but this is the day that you're, you're chosen. This is your time. And, um, you know, we went to the cut and all that. You know what I'm saying? Did my put on 30 seconds and all that. Did my thing. And, uh, so not, not only I'm a crip at heart now, but I'm a crip at heart, but also an official crip. And I had, had my head, head held high and all that. You know what I'm saying? Threw up the sea and walked with pride. And it was the best, one of the, it was one of the best feelings in my life because it, it, for so long, you know, and now finally that day happened and I was just really proud of myself. It was a decision that, you know what I'm saying? I've always wanted, you know what I'm saying? It was a choice I always wanted to do. It always, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, Crip is what I am as a person. I'm not saying a hundred percent, like, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it's not like my whole entire person, but like, you know what I'm saying? It's a huge piece of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am, Crip is part of me. Crip is 
a part of what I am, who I am. You know what I'm saying? It's part of my heart. You know, it was for 30 seconds. It felt like forever. It felt like a whole minute. Even though it was for 30 seconds, it was. It felt like a minute. You know what I'm saying? It, t- it felt like a while. But, you know, did my thing. And after it was all said and done, just rolled on from there. Now you rarely, you know, most, I think you can agree with me that most gang members um, have grown up with one parent in the household. Usually Uh, at least that's how it is out here. You know, it's, it's mom, you know, pops is nowhere to be found. That's, you know, kind of the story across the board. You had both parents. Um, So I'm curious, you know, I'm curious when your, your parents found out, you know, that you were a crip, you know, what was their general reaction? I mean, I ain't going to lie to you. They knew in the back of their head, you know, like it was eventually going to happen because, like, just the way I was, like, to the kid. And not only that, just, like, family members even outside, uh, like like I said, like, they, they knew that I was a crip, you know what I'm saying, at heart. You know, like, they, they knew in the back of their head, you know what I'm saying. They just was like, you know, you know you're passionate about this. Just make sure you don't... um just make sure you watch yourself and make sure you do the right thing at the end of the day. You know, because like I said, like, um, a lot of sets really don't, um, a lot of sets don't really operate the same way, you know, and the way my set operates, you know, it's like, we're really on a whole different type of timing from a lot of people. I mean, like a lot of sets, like we're really trying to be productive in our shit, you know what I'm saying? We're really trying to give back. We plan every day about how we're going to give back to our families and loved ones and um, eventually our communities. When were you most active? You know what ages did you say it was really on and popping with you? With me, I would say, like, I was, like, really active out there, like, around 15. Definitely 15. Mm Mm-hmm. At that time, I was just a wild ass dude. You know, I was just like buck wild. I was just uh, like I, I was like an instigator, and I was like starting fights in school and all that. But it wasn't like towards bloods or anything like that at first. It was like, in fact, not at all. But I was really starting fights with these racist white dudes that went to school with me in middle school and all that. It's kind of crazy because you know where we are. It's a very diverse. Uh, area and the fact that we still have racists that go to school with us, you know what I'm saying? We're surrounded by a whole whole bunch of races. It's just like mind blowing, you know? Yeah, I had a race like, ride in my school too, in ninth grade, man. Yeah, the ninth grade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yeah, that was the grade I was in when I was like really um, you know what I'm saying, just being all like doing my thing, you know? Mm-hmm. But that was when I was like in this. That was when I was in the in that in that crew I was mentioning. Okay. What happened was, you know, um, this loyalty, you know, common the usual thing, uh, this loyalty, you know, what I'm saying, the backstabbing and all that. So I did my own thing on my own, and that's just how it went. Mm. What's the What's the gang culture like now in 2021 in the DMV? Um, we talked about this in, in the last uh, episode with you, Trey, and um, Swift, where I got a comment in my in my comments. Man, there ain't no Crips and Bloods in Washington D.C. There ain't no Crips and Blood. What, what's the gang? What's the what's the culture like? What's um you know? Do you see gangs growing? Do you see a growing presence? Like, talk to me about what's going on in 2021 now. I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this. First of all, that comment, ha. <laughs> I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you how it is right now. A lot of shit that's been on the ground, all that's happening now is that it's finally coming on into the light. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it took a long time for it to really hit, but now it's really hitting here. You know, like we're now like officially getting our start. To be honest with you, because before, like I said, you had people that was going out of town and bringing it back. Or they just know where to look at. Like, yeah, very, 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 very few sets out here, you know. Other than that, you had people that were just, like, you know saying, that looked similar into that, but they were just repping their little crew or 
all that. But now the actual shit is happening. And um, before that, even around that same time back in the day, there were crypts out here and shit, but they were real, to be honest with you, like so, a few, some of them were doing that eight ball, you know. Some of them were doing that eight ball. Like I'm talking about, like explain where, that again, yeah, just for the people out there. I'm, who I'm talking about. Talking I, about. I, I, some of them were doing that eight ball, which is basically like when the Chris and the GDs, you know, what I'm saying, um, put their signs together. You know, what I'm saying the Chris was referring to six point star and all that. You know, Chris like me and like you no know saying Crips that are tapped into the land and all that. You know. We say those crypts are either misguided or we just call them straight up GDs because, you know what I'm saying, crypts never really, never rep the stars or anything like that. We always identified ourselves with the line and the turf that we push in and all that. We never identify with the star. You know, that, that, like, I remember a blood actually told me about that. Um, uh, well, this was back when I was in high school, too. Blood told me about the star, and he was like involved and said that without New York or whatever. But he told me about the star, and I was like, "What is that?" And he basically explained to me what it was, and I was like, "I've never heard that shit in my entire life." Because like I was always like me, even though I I'm from the DMV area, I was always influenced by the West Coast culture. Like I've always been um, intact with it, like from the music to the to the style, you know, I've always been, like, um, influenced by the West Coast culture, you know, so just hearing that, that, East, like, you know what I'm saying, we call that, that that East Coast stuff, when we hear that, it was, like, when I heard that, it was very, very odd to me, I was just like, what, and then, come to find out, there were crips that were doing the eight ball and all that, but I just chose to stay away from that, because, it wasn't familiar to me, and I just felt like, you know, there might be some repercussions to that if they came across, like, if they were to come across, like, actual crypts that were um, actually tapped into the land and all that, because the actual crypts that were tapped into the land, they, they basically view that as um, as milk, and basically that's basically fake. Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little Is it turning up a little bit more out there? It's, L.A. is on fire right now when it comes to the, I mean, everything skyrocketing Shootings, killings Like, it's L.A.'s headed back to where yeah, we were back in yeah, the 90s Yeah, it is You know, ever since the beginning of the year Um uh, where I'm at, you know, it's been like a homicide every single day in different parts and all that. Sometimes two, sometimes three. You know, it's it's really turning up now. Like everything, like every, it, it's just uh, it's just really getting crazy out here. You know, you just never know when it's gonna be somebody's last day nowadays. Just how it is now. You just never know. Do you think the younger cats out there wilding out right now? Do you think? They don't have a lot of guidance, you know, a big homie kind of staring them, telling them, hey, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. To be honest with you, no. Okay. I mean, like, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this, like, because a lot of the <coughs> homies and all that, they move from their hood. You know what I'm saying? They move, and they may see, like, um, they can't, they get, they stay in contact with, you know what I'm saying, dudes their age group, but they don't really reach a lot. Most of them don't really reach out to the uh, dudes from their own neighborhood or whatever. So these little dudes basically came up with this mindset, okay, we've been abandoned by our own uh, big homies and all that stuff. We want to start doing whatever we want to do. And if they ever try to reach us, then forget them and all that because look what they did. They left us and all that. And the ones that do have, you know what I'm saying, big homies to tell them something, they, it's like going one ear and not the other because they've been watching too much drill scene that's shy rap. You know what I'm saying? That that was a, a huge influence out here too, like along with like other states. But like, um, I remember. Really? Okay. My, Did we ever yeah, talk right. about the drill scene? Have we talked about that yet? I'm just curious. Out of the couple of conversations we had, we kind of did. We okay. kind of did. Yeah, I would love to touch on that a little bit more. But go, go ahead, keep going. But yeah, like uh, especially like where I'm from and all that. Like people really started acting like they were actually from Chirac. 
that's why I said, and like I think it was like the very first interview, if, the, if you was to take these guys, these same dudes, and take them to the actual Chirac, they would not even last, not even a full day. Yeah. You know, so they're at the Chirac, you know, they're actually, it's actually the real deal. And you really don't know, like, how the politics and, like, how shit really goes down out there and all that. Like, see, my my locs now I'm talking now I'm talking about that to the crypt culture. See, my locs actually some of them actually went to LA and tapped in with the people that they need tapped into and all that and they got their own hands on experience. You know, so they know what it's like out there. Like my 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 Loke Avenue Trey, he just went to LA like a month or two ago and, you know, say so he came back. You know, so he'd be making trips out there and all that doing this thing, you know. And, um, like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas know what it's like out there. You know what I'm saying? I might even take it, to be honest, I might even take a trip out there myself because I always wanted to, I've always wanted to go to LA ever since I was Man, a kid. it's cheap right now, homie. You might as well come right. You could probably get a flight for 50, 60 bucks, to be honest with you. <laughs> now, is that on Spirit or is that on a, <laughs> for real, right? <laughs> Dead ass airline, <laughs> kill a nigga airline or some shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nah, but um, yeah, no. Whenever you do come out here, man, I you know set a day aside where I can show you around, smoke out with you, chill, take you to the nice parts of LA. I ain't gonna take you to the hood and shit. <laughs> I'm, I'll take you to the <laughs> I'll take you to the beach and shit like that. <laughs> oh, for sure. Cool. Hey, yeah. Tell Avenue Trey the same thing though, dog. Since he does come out here, man, tell him to hit me up if he ever uh, comes out here. Yeah, no problem. Cool, cool. Well, shit, let's keep going, man. Um, did we talk about Block Boy last time? Nah. Okay. Um, now that story, that story is actually kind of blurred to me. I know. I don't even okay, know. let me let me kind of explain it to you, and then I'm gonna explain it to my audience who aren't f- familiar. You know, this was a few months back, but it's still kind of one of those stories that just is still lingering out here in LA. But Block Boy was a dude on Instagram who had a hell of a following, a lot of followers. I followed him about a month before his death. But um, he would go from hood to hood. He would go to, let's say, the Hoovers, and he would hop out of his car, record himself saying, you know, F your hood, blah, 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 uh, spit on their graffiti, stuff like that, hop in his car, go to Nickerson Gardens, do the same thing, hop in his car, go to Long Beach, you know, Crip Hood. And he was just basically like Takashi 6 9 on steroids. Um, but long story short, uh, about December of this, you know, past year, he was found shot in his car in Lakewood, California, which is 99% of just a nice area, Mayberry area, just fucking, it's, it's, it's a nice area. I couldn't, I wanted to buy a house there. I couldn't cause it was just too expensive, but long story short, somebody caught him slipping. But yeah, now that you kind of know the full story, what, what are your thoughts on that dude? Do these dudes really think they could just go in other people's neighborhoods and just disrespect it like that and think there ain't going to be no repercussions? See, that's what that cloud chasing gets you. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry for, for uh, what happened to you, but, like, it's common sense. Like, you can't just go in other people's neighborhoods and do that and don't think, like, you know what I'm saying, one day one of these dudes is going to catch you slipping. You know? Like, it's going to happen one way or another. It might be the next day. It might be the next month. It might be the next year. But somebody's going to catch you slipping. We even, uh, I think uh, DMV even got a dude that's doing that out here for real, for real. I don't know if he's from out here. I don't know if he's from out here or if he's from somewhere else. But he's basically going to D.C. hoods doing that shit too. You know? Wow. That's all clout chasing. But like I said, what does that clout chasing get you? Mm -hmm. Early grave, homie. Exactly. And the only ones that yeah, suffer are I don't, I, yeah. I don't know if it's for the likes or the attention or That's whatever, what but I mean, if you want to, if you if you want to be see, put a target on your back, say, "Hey, I'm stupid, shoot me," then go right ahead. That's the best way to do it. Mm. Attention is the biggest drug right now, homie. Yep, and it's it's getting these attention. kids whacked. Yep, and I don't know if we talked about this going back to the drill scene, but um, they have they have this thing. And you know this as well because you touch you, you you know know music as well, but they have this thing where they diss the dead ops, they diss the the 
the dead homies. I'm, I'm smoking such and such. And for my, my friends out there who don't know what I'm talking about, you know, that means they're, they're rolling up a blunt and the weed is the dead opposition, you know, little Mikey Mike or whoever I'm smoking Mikey Mike. And it, it's just something that, you know, unfortunately at BG duck rapper from Chicago who was killed. He, um, he had a song called dead bitches right before he passed where he was just naming everybody, man. Um, I don't know if we talked about that, but you know, what are your general thoughts on that whole aspect of hip hop? Like I said, that's all clout. Like, what? What's the? What's really the whole point of saying all that shit? Like, I remember in LA, it was like saying, "Fuck, fuck you and your dead homies and shit." But like now, when you're saying, "Oh, you smoking names. such such pack," that's taking like a whole like like think about it. Like, you're really smoking at like you're, it's like you're picturing in your head like you're smoking ashes of your dead homies and shit i mean like not de- your dead homies i mean like mm-hmm. your opposition's dead homies like you don't think niggas gonna be like really pissed off about this shit it's like as killing them slow in a verbal um way in a verbal action as well so it, i just say like to be honest that that shit came from all came from chicago you know what i'm saying nobody was saying that until the chicago uh niggas started saying that shit and everybody wanted to hop on the bandwagon and start saying that shit and what happens when they say that they get whacked yeah like to be honest like like people just need to stop hopping on the bandwagon you know what I'm saying cause shit certain, certain things in different states they ain't they ain't gonna be tolerating that they're not gonna be um they're not gonna be friendly uh, with you about that type of shit you know and Chicago always had problems, you know. Oh, yeah. Chicago always had problems. Yeah, man. So like, why, like people always want to like put themselves in the position, but that they never really um, understand the culture and like how how serious it is out there and all that. Yeah, my thing is you're not you're not thinking about the future. Let's say five years down the line, you decide to change your lifestyle, right? Let's say Takashi mm-hmm. Six Nine five years down the line just decides to follow Jesus and be the biggest Jesus person, and I love God, and I'm a blah blah blah. The the people who you disrespected five years ago, they still remember all that shit you said, and it really hurts. And they've been thinking about you for five years, and they don't give a goddamn that you you know excuse my words, Lord, but they don't give a damn that you're following you know Jesus now that you change your life. If they catch you slipping in five years, dog, not just tomorrow, not just next week when you're hot. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna tell you like this. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be over for him. He's like not I said. Gonna, yep, you're one hundred percent. Go ahead. Like I said, there is no. In my in, in in my world, and you know, what I'm saying in my view, there is no expiration on disrespect, especially the type of disrespect he did. Like there it is. Once you snitch, you know, what I'm saying it, it, it's not it's not going to like just go away or vanish here or like being brushed under the rug or anything like that. Niggas going like true niggas. You know what I'm saying? They're going to remember that shit, and then when they see you, they're going to do what they got to do. You know, what I'm saying you put yourself on on the platter as a filet mignon wrap. All right. Well, niggas about to take your order. That's just what, that's just how it is. And like I said before, when you become part of this, um, when you get into this element, you know what I'm saying? And then like when you decide when you become Crip, Blood, DD, Vice Lord, whatever gang you decide to be, and even, not even just, like, you know what I'm saying, like, any of those games. Like, you could, it could just be your own little clique, or it could be, like, you know what I'm saying, you're on your little own individual, like, trap and shit. But the number one rule is, the, one, the number one rule is not snitch. And, you know, like, that, that's street code everywhere. And, and nowadays, like, snitching became the norm. And there ain't no repercussions to that. Like, I don't know what happens to these, like, I don't know what happened over time in the generations and all that shit, but like, I remember time that man you snitched, huh? <laughs> pack your bag <laughs> and get the fuck out of here as soon as you do that shit because um they they on your way they're on their way to you. But as you see, it's like people just praise that shit now, and that that shit is just goofy to me. You know, shit ain't the way it used to be no more. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat.
Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job is some food to eat. Just give Maryland me a courts now allow rap lyrics to be used as evidence in murder trials. So basically anything you say in a song can and will be used against you in a court of law. Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, like I said, at least, you know what I'm saying, now people got to stop capping on the, on the, right. <laughs> on, 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 you know what I'm saying, studio-ass gangsters and shit, you know what I'm saying? And also you got to be careful about what, what you're saying because like I said, like, but I mean, they've been doing that, but like now since it's official, like you definitely got to watch out. Like I remember, uh, now this is another state. I remember a long time ago, like two decades ago. Um, I don't know if you heard about them niggas, but you heard of the Lincoln Park Blood? Of course, in uh, San Diego, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I remember they caught uh, one of these dudes that was rapping on a song about some Skyline Piru dude that uh, they worked. Mm. And uh, they played that tape in the courtroom to uh, match the voice to the... um, Defended, and he was found guilty and all that. So basically, that's basically the same shit that's going to go on right here in the DMV area. So like, people really need to watch out what they say, and also like, even the music videos definitely got to stop waving them guns around. Even like even on social media, stop waving them guns around and shit like that because they definitely on your they definitely on asses. You know what I'm saying? They definitely. They they just look just for one thing. Because you know what's going to happen, and I've heard many people say this. Uh, it don't matter what, how nice your suit is in court and how well your hair is in court and you got your, your, your beard uh-huh. trimmed and everything. When they pull those pictures up of you on Instagram pointing that gun at the at the camera, it, it, that's all they're done. Yeah. You're done. You're done. They're taking you out. Yeah. Done. And you know what I'm saying? It's different from different states and all that shit, but, like, yeah, you're done. So niggas get, really got to start moving um, really smart and actually, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not it's not corny to find, you know what I'm saying, something productive to do, you know, make a life outside of, you know what I'm saying, what you're currently doing. It's not, it's not corny to do that at all, you know, because you got to think about what people really need to do is start thinking about the future instead of the now. And I think that's a lot, a lot of problems. That's that's really one of the main problems. Like a lot of people worried about what's happening, like what's going on in their life now, mm-hmm. instead of thinking about what's going to happen in their life in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I always um, carry myself very differently from everybody else and roll different. You know, like I don't be putting myself in positions where, you know, it might cost me uh, not even to like even be a marriage. You know what I'm saying, or anything like that. Like I always like, like if it's if it's my own situation and all that. If it's a situation where I can handle myself, you know what I'm saying. I find the best way I can handle it myself. But my first reaction is not to go, you know, saying thinking about killing dude or whatever. Like, in certain ways, you gotta carry situations in life. You can't just like have it in your mind like every single situation you gotta go get a gun and go shoot somebody like. A lot of situations can be um, settled with just even just a simple phone call or a conversation. Yeah. But a lot, nowadays, the problem is a lot of people don't even want to talk. Yeah. Talk shit out and get some clarity and all that. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers really got to start putting that pride to the side. Like, I understand, like, you know what I'm saying? It's codes and all that shit. Blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it's protocols as well. And also, like, for instance, like, I'll give you an example. Uh, I mean, it's another thing, not an example. It's something else I even want to bring up. Um, you really got, Nick, people really got to stop bringing their beefs into the house. Stop, um, you know what I'm saying? Stop letting people know where you live. Like, I feel really uh, bad about uh, the situation with Honeycomb Brazy. You know, that that, that was, that was a very, that, that, was that was a very, a day, uh, homie. Yeah, that was a very heartbreaking situation because, oh, yeah. Two months ago, it's March. So yeah, two months ago, I just lost my grandmother. But like, I mean, she died a very peaceful death. God rest her soul. But like, to get shot, to get shot up like that, yeah, man. no. Ugh. And then, 
one of the bullets hit something to catch the house on fire. Like, when I first heard that, I'm just like, what the hell? Like, first of all, who raised these dudes? And where did these dudes even learn how to shoot? And what gave these dudes the idea to just go to his grandparents' house and just start shooting it up? And then his grandparents don't even have anything to do with it. Like, I was, we don't even know. Yeah. And OG like, was telling on, me, man. yeah, he was telling me that there's just no code anymore, man. 20, 30 years ago, you wouldn't have done something like that. Yeah, you know, people be telling me that all the time. But, like, you know what I'm saying? I always have my head, like, you know, oh, I wish I, it was how it was back in the day and all that. But, you know, and ain't those days no more. Yeah. Like, some, some people even say, like, make comparisons, like, uh, is going back to the way it was like back in the nineties, oh, but 91, 92, the, but here, but here's the thing, but here's the difference though. In the nineties, there was still rules. In the nineties, right. there was still code. Right now, it's like it's like the nineties, but without no codes or rules. It's mm. just basically like a free for all. It's mm. like anything goes. Even shoot, even babies, mm. even babies go. Yeah. Like come on, now. like yeah. I don't know who'd be making up these rules and all that stuff, but that's just. That shit corny as fuck. And on on top of that, that shit is just, I don't know. Like, it's just really, really, really fucked up. It's just really fucked up. And I, I don't really fuck with this this new generation shit that's going on and all that shit. Because, you know, during, um, when I was growing up and all that shit, niggas would have gotten them shit, their, their head split for even doing some shit like that. You don't By go your own take gang, that. probably, right? Yeah, you don't, you don't take that shit to grandparents and like the babies and you know say people that had nothing to do with it you don't do that shit like who, where where are these dudes be coming up these ideas to do that shit like come on now yeah and OG, like, uh, OG was very specific with me uh, just a few shows back um, he said that you know back in the day when he was coming up he's probably like 50 or so he was like, you know, if you're walking through the mall and in the opposite direction, you, you know, a, a guy from the uh, enemy, you know, hood is walking towards you. He has his baby. He has his wife or whatever. You give him a pass. You look at him like, you know, you know, I could have got you. Right. But you give him a pass. You know, nowadays in 2021, it, they're shooting the baby. They're shooting the fucking wife. They're shooting the dude who works at Foot Locker. I mean, it's just crazy. Man, I'm going to tell you this story right now. I'm going I'm to tell you this story mm -hmm. that, that, that happened a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was at this convenience store, right? And um, no names, though, obviously. Nah, I, I ain't gonna name. Mm -hmm. Definitely no names. And this uh, this blood dude came in, and uh, he was looking at me like all hostile and all that stuff. And I was looking back at him, but you know, what I'm saying like we could have threw down in there and all that stuff, but you know why I didn't throw down? It was with his lady. Mm -hmm. And not, it's not his wife. It was obvious. It was obviously his girl. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, his girlfriend doesn't have anything to do with this. So why should I, you know what I'm saying, jump on food? So I had in my head, like, you know what? I'm just going to get full pass. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, it'll be another day where we will we'll settle the situation, wherever animosity had towards me and all that shit. And obviously, it's because I'm a crip, you know what I'm saying? But my thing is, like, any other dude, they would have, like, did what they wanted to do, you know what I'm saying? Girlfriend got it too, blah, blah, woo, -woo, -woo and all that. But I ain't that type of dude. Like, if you're with, you know what I'm saying, with your your, your parents, your mom, your girl, your child, whatever, man, I man, that shit giving you a – I'm just going on about your business, man. Yeah, man. You know what I'm but plus, we get, plus, I'm at the age where I ain't even got time for that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to better myself as a person, but I mean, don't get it wrong. I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do if you bring it to me. You know, because at the end of the day, I love my life. And I love my loved one's life. I love, you know what I'm saying, the genuine people that's in my life. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't let anything happen to them and all that. But all that shit just for, oh, trying to make a name for yourself and trying to, you know what I'm saying, seem like you're the biggest, baddest dude on around all that stuff, man, I ain't got time for that shit, man. You know, people on some, people on bigger, better things in life. People trying to, like, you know what I'm saying, do what they gotta do, go to the future and all that. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Yeah.
Just world. give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit So you were talking about, I guess, one of the real reasons why you decided to join the gang? A lot, majority of the DMV area, you know, people are related to one another out here, you know. Like, they, their relative, family, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, mainly represent their hoods, you know what I'm saying, these little clicks and all that stuff. But, like, with the hood thing, it's mainly through family, you know. Like, you know, you see family gatherings, you know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, some hoods out here that are just all family, you know. And... Me, you know, I'm from out here. I was always like an outcast, you know, especially like you know because like I, I, I ain't got no relatives or bloodline traced back around like Maryland area. Like all my family down south, out like out Mississippi, Houston, and on my mom's side, it's across the ocean, literally. So you know, I I grew up as an only child. Never really had no siblings or anything like that that lived with me. And one thing about like gangs in general is like, you know, it's like the sense of that kind of family that others have out here that you don't, you know. And then with like the whole Crip thing, not only it reflects me as a person, you know, but like when I got in contact with the set, you know, and seeing that these individuals, the me these individuals and all, they were in many ways like different individuals was like a different personality of me, you know. But one thing about all of us is that we were really passionate about this culture, this cripping, you know. And that's how I knew that this set, that's another reason why I knew. The set Harlem 30 Avenue Crip OHC OHAC, I should say. You know what I'm saying? That's the Crip home for me. I'm with a set of individuals that are in some ways or many ways just like me, you know? And, you know, people really couldn't understand that unless they were the only child themselves. Like, it's really hard. You know, especially them times, you know, you wish you would be with somebody like in terms of like a brother or even a sister, you know what I'm saying, been to and all that. And, you know, you can't have that because you're her only child. But a lot of people out here, I notice, are very, not, 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 not trying to bash, but what I know is that a lot of people out here are really ungrateful to have siblings. And I always tell them, I really wish I had what you have in terms of like families and siblings and all that. Because, you know, I mean, that's not going to make me not be a crip because, like I said, that's why I'm at heart. But, like, you know, that family thing, that's really like, that, that, that's something that I wish and I bet almost. Every only child wish they had because they would never experience being the only child. You would get a whole lot of things you would not be able to experience, you know. And you just feel like you're just out of place. You feel like you're left out. You feel like you're an outsider. Yeah, yeah that's deep, homie. And you know what? If I could kind of, you know, be Mr. Brightside over here. I bet there are a lot of people who look at you and be like, you know, damn man, I wish I had my dad. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, they do. They actually yeah. say they they say that. They yeah, say we, they wish I, they had. I, I didn't have a dad, homie. I had to learn a lot of shit from my friends and just the wrong way and and just you know and yeah. to, to hear somebody who had a pops, it's like you're like a unicorn in the in the hood, like really. You know what I'm saying? Which is so just just the way you feel about you know not having siblings. And I appreciate you sharing that. You know, just think that you, on the flip side, you uh, you have a father and you had a father because, man, like seventy percent of us didn't, dog. And that's a that's that's it's a tough thing to grow to learn how to be a man from your homeboy who's like three months older than you. You know what I'm saying? It's really hard. So, you know, look at it yeah. on the bright side. A lot of people actually. 
a lot of people actually told me that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly what you said. They said the exact same thing about the unicorn. But they also say, like, they wish they had a father and a mother like mine, you know. Mm-hmm. And I understand that, you know. I definitely understand that. Um, you have anything you want to promote? Now the floor is yours, homie. Not really. I mean, I just want to say, you know, people really got to start, like, thinking about, like, stop. they got to stop. First of all, they got to stop letting motherfuckers think, say, okay, we're going to go do this, do that, blah, 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 and not know, like, you know what I'm saying, well, there's a baby in there and all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, because, like, think about it. What does a baby have to do with, any, like, a baby is just born. The baby is just learning what the world is like, you know, all of a sudden it comes to a, a very gruesome end because a bullet, like it, it's, it's really ridiculous. Or, and or grand- the opposite. You're 70 years old and you think you lived your life and then, you know, you're, you're enjoying your last few years of your life and somebody comes and shoots your house up exactly. and your house cuts on fire. Exactly. Like, like it, it's, it's really, it's a really messed up world that we live in now. Like, I always, you know what I'm saying, I always be like, man, I wish it could go back to the way it was, like, when I was, like, you know what I'm saying, born or, like, coming up and all that stuff, but them days is gone, you know, and I just be, like, I, I just be doing what I got to do, you know what I'm saying, like, I just, I'm just trying to make this money, trying to better myself as a person, you know, be a better crip every day and all that, you know, actually, I like I always been like living by way actually stands for it, community revolution and progress, but now it's taking a new term term community restoration and progress. Mm. I'm actually trying to do you know what I'm saying I'm trying to do good for myself, um, my household. I'm trying to do good you know what I'm saying for my loved ones, my community. You know, like but it's not going to happen all in one day. You know, I just got you know what I'm saying I. It's going to take it's going to take a while, but I'm actually going to be the individual to actually do something. You know, I'm not just saying that. Like, I'm actually going to do something. You know, because people always be like, "Oh, I'm going to come back to the neighborhood." You know, saying, "Do this, do that, blah blah." We'll do, but they never ever come back to it. You know, I I understand. You know, what I'm saying Nipsey Hustle. You know, what I'm saying Nipsey did the same thing, and Very you know, saying, he got, Nipsey got killed. Out there. He got killed. He got killed by doing that. You know, what I'm saying he actually was like you know what I'm saying privately fed dudes doing all that shit but that's why you know what I'm saying when um you, you just gotta roll differently when um you start seeing progress in your life that doesn't mean abandon where you're from or you know what I'm saying but you just gotta roll cautiously because not everybody's gonna see you the same way when you come back or not everybody is gonna be your homeboy or whatever when you come back to your old stomping grounds you know, it's just a certain way you got to maneuver. It, it wasn't like that a long time ago, but over the, over decades, shit just got watered down. Now it's like you can't even trust nobody. It's sad, but that's just, that's just the way it is. Can I give a few shout-outs, too? Please do. Floor is yours, Doc. Shout-out to my sick cousin. You know what I'm saying? Hold your head up. Keep, keep grooving in there, five deuce way. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the four trades, you know what I'm saying, four thirty unit, you know. Shout out to the six dudes diamonds, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the true real crips and even true true blood doing their thing, you know. Ain't no hater around here. Ain't no hate in these parts. No hate.